Welcome to Lifestyle by Design, helping you solve everyday challenges. I'm Karen Jacobs, an occupational therapist and a clinical professor at Boston University and a Brookline Rotarian. And I'm Andrea Kelso, the Brookline Access Television Community Relations Coordinator. As always, the format of our show discusses topics of well-being with your body and how that fits in with your community. And today we have a really uh, excellent episode focused on travel, both in your city and outside of your city. And we're joined by an expert local travel agent based here in Brookline, Marina Brodskaya. Marina, thank you for jo and joining us on the show and sharing your tips and advice for okay. everyone who wants to travel. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, what we thought we would do is first start out with local travel. Sometimes people don't have the resources to do some international trips or even around the country. Um, but we live in a beautiful area, so can you help us sort of imagine traveling but not leaving this Boston, Brookline area? Of course, absolutely. Yes, we do live in a beautiful, beautiful city by the water, and there are so many things that can be done here very inexpensively on, a, you know, quite a low budget, mm -hmm. but very interesting for the whole family. Uh, well, first, uh, we have lines that go around the Boston Harbor. They can take you to uh, different islands within the harbor. They can take you whale watching. It might be a very exciting day for the whole family. We have many things here in Boston, including many new bike trails. And with bikes available uh, pretty much in every city around Boston these days, that might be as well be a great trip for the whole family. Right, you can rent bikes. Of course. Mm -hmm. Very easily, yes. Yes, That's of great. course. Uh, there, uh, there, there might be a beautiful day in Boston Harbor. As I said, we have a great new museum here in Boston, which I would love to introduce, and that is the Boston Tea Party Museum. Do you know, I didn't even realize there was a new museum. That's fantastic, and I've lived here a very long time. I've been to this museum at the inaugural opening, mm -hmm. and I can say it's a very uh, interesting experience, again, for the whole family. It's very important these days when the family is traveling sure. to make sure that every member of the family has something of an interest because no one wants to sacrifice their travel time for, mm -hmm. for the interest of just a, one group member or mm -hmm. one family member. So, uh, as I said, uh, the Tea Party Museum is located uh, right on the harbor, mm -hmm. right by the Boston Children's Museum. Do you know what? I think I saw that the last time I was at the Children's Museum. Really? It, they look like pirate ships, but they obviously <laughs> weren't pirate ships, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They actually, they're exact replicas mm -hmm. of the original ships. There are two ships there right now, with one coming very soon. Great. And the most interesting thing about this museum, it is very interactive experience. You go through um, a learning curve, you learn about the whole uh, movement, and you see Samuel Adams talking to you. Uh, they really will explain and engage you in the, the how event unfolded. And then you go on the ship and you take part in the tea party throwing, if I should say, <laughs> because you throw the actual tea blocks into the Boston wow. Harbor. And then you walk back into the museum for another, for the second set of the interactive experience, where pictures talk to you from the walls, and they will tell you a little more about the Paul Revere right, um, about uh, signing of the Constitution. It is really great experience, and then after that, what do you think? You go to a tea room oh, to experience fun. very good cup of tea. English tea. <laughs> oh, well, I have to say, I'm going to put that on my list for the summer because it sounds like it would be so much fun for every family member. Absolutely. Now, Freedom Trail. Everybody's heard of the Freedom Trail, and I was walking yesterday um, quite a few miles in Boston, and I got swept up in the beauty of walking on Commonwealth Ave Mall, where there's lots of statues, yeah. into the Boston Common. 
where yeah. there's great things like the swan boats, which cost three dollars to ride. Absolutely. So the Freedom Trail, can you tell us more about that? Yes, of course, it's a great walking trail mm -hmm. through Boston and on a nice day it's a beautiful walk. As you, you know, correctly say, just walking as, you know, the Commonwealth Mall, mm -hmm. there are so many interesting statues, there's so yes. much to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, Boston is a great city, there are so many firsts that mm -hmm. we have in our city. It's the first Boston, uh, first public garden. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's first, uh, we have a frog pond, which <laughs> which is famous, the ducklings, mm -hmm. uh, the Beacon Hill. There's so many things uh, to explore about our city. So when you walk along, and there is a path as you go in downtown Boston, and quite often you can just walk it with the person um, who is will explain to you uh, what steps are you taking as you go to the Old South Church, or you stay in front of the old city hall, you just looking at these old buildings, you feel the history filtering through you. And as I said, there's so much to learn. And we often go to uh, different cities, we travel different parts of the world or even different states, and don't realize how many interesting things that might be here in our own city. Absolutely. Right. And there's a lot of events, especially in yeah. the summertime, that mm -hmm. happen. If you, I've actually never done the Freedom Trail all in succession, mm -hmm. but I've always visited parts yeah. throughout the years I've lived here. And inevitably, I always start somewhere around the government center area. It yep. is a hub, they're accessible by T and buses. And what's so great is every time you go into that part of the city, there's always something going on at the government center Absolutely. area. And it, there's usually giveaways or concerts. Um, yeah, it's craft, always craft nice. Fairs. Right. Craft craft fairs. Fairs. And you can you can walk the trail up through the uh, like aquarium area mm -hmm. with the Marriott yeah. uh, mm -hmm. on the wharf. There is, and you can hop on the uh, on the orange bus, the hop on right. hop, 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 and hop. just take a tour mm -hmm. around Boston. You can do, uh, you, it makes many stops around mm -hmm. Boston. And again, they, they, they will take you to U.S. Constitution, the, the real in Charlestown, Navy mm -hmm. Yard. Uh, so on a nice day, it might be a really great experience for the family, for the whole family. Right. No, it's great. And, and the other thing about the Boston area is that there's so many different cultures that you can feel that you visited Italy if you go to the North End, or China if you go to Chinatown. Of course. So there's, there's so much that we can do locally. And in the Brookline area as well, easy walking um, from Brookline into, into Boston. I do it all the time. Right? Yeah. Now, I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, I think we have so much in, in our local area, but some people might want to travel away, mm -hmm. you know, maybe to another state or even internationally. Can you share with us some, some tips about, about travel in general? Of course. Um, as I said, uh, there, we live in a really nice area, convenient mm -hmm. to many, uh, like study, starting points to many trips, mm -hmm. which might be on a budget for a family as well. Great. For example, there are neighboring states like New Hampshire, Vermont, even going south a little bit to like Rhode Island and mm -hmm. a little further south, they might be a great trip they have wonderful summer festivals, uh, music festivals, food, uh, local fairs that might be fun for the whole family. Mm -hmm. I know that Vermont has many wonderful places and you can go as, you know, as uh, far back to, to, as to the like Burlington area. They do have a lot of wonderful festivals. Well, one of the things that I've always wanted to do and I, I have, it's on my bucket list, is to go around Vermont to the different cheese fact where they're making cheese. Yes. And of course I want to do the wine ones as well. Um, and th that's that's all local. Upstate New York is the wonderful mm -hmm. if uh, there are wine lovers in the family mm -hmm. uh, and you want to have some gourmet experience. Uh, upstate New York, Finger Lakes is a great area to visit. Uh, also, if you have um, if you have kids, 
in your family who love a sound of music mm -hmm. or maybe kids at heart who also love sure. that movie uh, there's a wonderful resort in Vermont where you can walk through the history of the whole I've family track family lodge oh, yeah absolutely. I love it it's love beautiful it, it is beautiful. beautiful and there's a great children's uh, uh, chorus festival in August mm. which happens right on the grounds it is a great place to visit beautiful. and that place um, all year round is beautiful. I do yes. cross country skiing there, um, and it's just exquisite. But any time of year, it's beautiful. Absolutely. So now you know we've looked at New England. Let's let's go further. Sometimes people want to go on cruises, but they don't want to fly, um, say to Florida. In the summertime, are there any ways of going on some nice cruises without of course. Go, leaving Boston? Thank you for mentioning that. Of course, because now is the perfect time. Okay. Uh, summertime, up uh, beginning in April, mm -hmm. there are cruises that sail from Boston. Great. Very convenient. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't require any flying. You know, you can leave if you need to drive from somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, like a Western Massachusetts. There is a parking garage right by the terminal. Oh, great. very inexpensive, very mm -hmm. convenient, and you can hop on the cruise to Bermuda, to um, Canada. Canada, New England are mostly done beginning in August and through the fall because it's a great time to see the fall foliage it's and beautiful. fall colors. I actually have done that cruise, and it's magnificent it is it now go there are some cruises that now go even further north to Quebec in mm -hmm. Montreal area mm -hmm. so that's a great opportunity mm -hmm. uh, and if people willing to travel just a little bit uh, mm -hmm. outside of Boston to New York or New Jersey area mm -hmm. it's Cape Liberty then there are greater options because there are more cruise lines that are now taking uh, departing from those ports mm -hmm. And again, it's very convenient. There are buses that are available from Boston if people don't want to drive. But there are also parking garages, again, very inexpensive, right there by the berth, by the mm -hmm. terminals. So you can leave your car there, just grab your luggage, and you're and, and go. right at the ship. That's, right. that's fantastic. So with cruises, I know there's probably a little bit more preparation that has mm -hmm. to go into getting ready to go, especially if you might be traveling internationally. So how far in advance, if someone is interested in doing something like that, how far in advance do they need to start? What are, what are some of the good early steps Great to take? question. Great question. One of the most important things mm -hmm. these days is start planning far in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's hard. Yeah, sure. we know that because, you know, we, we all have different plans and, you know, work, uh, work sometimes does not allow for that. But if you can start, especially if uh, you have a family or extended family mm -hmm. traveling, it's better to start as early as maybe nine months in advance. Oh, okay. But, uh -huh. well, preferably not less than six. I would mm -hmm. say six to nine months, mm -hmm. going, of course, to like toward nine months. Because with that, you get, well, first, it's not as hectic, and you would get a better prices in terms of if you do have to fly, mm -hmm. then it's the airfare will be better. And you get a great selection in terms of the cabins mm -hmm. for the cruise ships. Or if you go to the resort, you, there are different room categories. You get a greater selection. You have better choices. Okay. Right. If you do have, if it does come to the point where it is a last minute travel, mm -hmm. What I usually suggest to my customers, be as flexible as possible. Mm -hmm. Do realize that it is a last minute and it's usually whatever's left. Sure, sure. You might not be able to get the flight that you absolutely want, the most convenient fly, mm -hmm. flight. Uh, if you do want that most convenient flight, it might be more expensive that you, know, you would pay six or nine months mm -hmm. before. And if you're traveling with a family in this situation, you might not be able to sit the whole family together on the plane. Or if you go to a resort or cabin, you might not be able to find cabins next to each other, the connecting ones. Okay. So you really need to be flexible. You really take whatever's left. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, you, you mentioned um, travel with children. And of yeah. that's really important. And I know a lot of families want to take their children, but they could have you know, very large age span. Um, what's it like to travel with children? What tips, let's talk about being on a plane, flying. 
um, some tips with traveling it's, with children. Yes, it's the biggest headache for <laughs> a, many, lot of, many, a lot of parents. Many right. parents. Yes, absolutely. What um, it really depends, and planning comes mm -hmm. a big role here because that's where it really comes into play. Because when you start early, you have time to think about it and plan your whole mm -hmm. trip. Uh, it really nice to think about all the ages of people in the traveling party. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you have babies or toddlers or sure. uh, teens, mm -hmm. they all have their different requirements. If you're traveling with a baby, it's, um, you have to think, I mean, if you have a, a seat, you know, right. uh, which you're carrying, you need to first and foremost, in any case, uh, you need to arrive to the airport way in advance. The requirements are now for the international flights are about three hours mm -hmm. and uh, about an hour and a half, two hours for domestic flight. Mm -hmm. Do not overlook these mm -hmm. requirements, mm -hmm. especially if you're traveling with kids or babies. Sure. Sure. Because, you know, things happen and give yourself plenty of time to go through security, especially summer travel or travel through school vacations. The airports are packed. Mm -hmm. Quite often they are understaffed and uh, you don't want your vacation to start on such a hectic note. Right. So uh, if you're traveling with a baby, uh, one of the things that um, I would recommend is, um, is, is small things uh, like try not to wear, uh, wear metal jewelry mm -hmm. on, uh, on you because if you, it's the last thing that as you go through the metal detector and you have a baby that you sure. also need to take care of, it's the and then the metal detector goes off, it's the last thing you want to go back, take it off, sure. you know, with the, you know, take care of the baby. That's one thing. Uh, another thing is. Um, what try to when you have uh, think about your shoes. Try sure. to have not to have shoelaces because kids as well as adults will need to take the shoes off, mm -hmm. and that will save you uh, some time a headache so too. You want comfortable shoes though. Absolutely. Because some of the airport the, the walking can be pretty pretty quite far. long. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. And the, one of the very important things is. Mm -hmm keep kids entertained. Right. Mm -hmm. I know with the luggage um, requirements these days, we try to pack lightly, mm -hmm. but try to get small things mm -hmm. that will keep kids entertained at the airport and on the plane. It might be, you know, there, there are so many things that you can do. Small electronic games, mm -hmm. little uh, books where, uh, like a word game or sure. uh, something that they can, you know, get a little pack of crayons. So, right. so they can color and things like that. Something that could fit in their lap. But mm -hmm. you Very gotta make easily sure you, you can. don't yeah. have completely electronics because there are times you can't use yeah. them. There's, of course. Batteries die. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's and a hard transition to something. No, and it can, it can be. Yeah, You're, a child's watching a movie and then all of a sudden, you know, the plane, <laughs> it, they announce, shut it off. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I found as you were talking is the kind of luggage that you would carry and we've got a suitcase here I just we can lift it up to, to show this is actually my own luggage and I spend a lot of time looking at luggage because I want to apply the ergonomics to it too so for family members one of the things I would recommend is to get uh, a lightweight suitcase um, 360 degree um, Casters, mm -hmm. wheels, because it makes it easier. You're holding a child, Absolutely. you can pull it, um, you can pile some things on. And this is the right size that fits in the overhead compartment. And what I find is that it's better to have one thing where you put everything, you get on the plane, take out the things that the kids need to play with, then you put this in the overhead compartment. And if it's a long flight, you maybe have to revisit taking things out again. Of course. But that one, and so that's been my, my own, you know, sort of s strategy for, for that. Um, That's a great because, one. because I think traveling hasn't, you know, traveling probably flights in particular haven't been that much fun anymore because there's a lot that we have to do to prepare. But those tips are fantastic for us. Now, I get lots of emails, and I get all of these emails saying, here's a coupon for this travel, here's a coupon for this. Um, and, and I always think, oh my God, this will be something great. And I remember just recently checking and finding that this, this great resort that I thought was going to be the best buy was four hours from the airport. And the only bus 
to take us there um, was at a crazy hour and I'd have to stay overnight and as I started adding it up it became even more money. So what do you do for someone like me who wants to travel, thinks she can do it herself, but is finding that it's really much more complicated? Of course, I hear it a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if you want to do it uh, by yourself, mm -hmm. of course, there are many sites, there are many different options where you can do it by yourself online. But I only suggest it to people who really, really know what mm -hmm. they do, uh, really know how to read the fine print and know their ways around. Um, in most cases, it works with just a very simple short trip. Let's say you need to fly Boston to New York mm -hmm. or Boston to Los Angeles. You just need to get a very simple flight. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, these days, there are so many different fees, uh, different complications. There are so many different policies, uh, which are quite often hidden from, from the public. Uh, so it's, um, if you really know what you do, then it's okay. But from my experience, I know that uh, the coupon deals mm -hmm. are mostly done by the companies mm -hmm. that want to promote themselves. They mm -hmm. have a really extended inventory, which otherwise they will not be able to sell. Okay. And it comes to a point where really, again, you have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. If you really uh, not care that you just want a quick getaway maybe, uh, you pretty much, uh, you, as I said, you're very flexible. You really don't care what, what your uh, accommodations will be. You're ready to take whatever because usually these deals have a, a lot of a lot of different uh, criteria to follow in order to get this deal. It's either a short time frame sure. or you need to take a certain room. So again, you need to be flexible. You need to be able to take that. Sure. That and risk sometimes risk as well, because if you go with a dependable tour operator, if you go with the regular route or the company, then you know that you're protected in many ways. Yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense. So um, working with uh, a, an agent to help a travel agent or a tour operator makes sense, um, particularly when you might have complicated things like you're going from one place to another or you're going to be staying for a while, or international travel. And I just want to bring us to a little bit more international travel um, because that's, that's something I do a lot. Um, and there's, I have this checklist, you know, make sure I've got all my immunizations, make sure my passport um, yep. has um, space for a visa. Um, and getting visas now has become much yes. more complicated as well and giving yourself extra time to get the visas too and what Absolutely. you need. Um, so international travel and some tips you can give us with that. What would be you something? mentioned actually a few, few things that are very, very important. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, passport. Yes. With the new regulations, mm -hmm. passport is the first thing you need to carry. Mm -hmm. you, it's a must. And as soon as you start thinking about your trip, you need to make sure that your passport is valid and the general rule is in most cases your passport has to be valid for six months yes. after the day of your return mm -hmm. so if you know that you know it's you ha it's time for you to uh, renew your passport do it the minute you think about that that travel and it's it's probably worth to check uh, passports for all uh, members in, in your group, mm -hmm. whether it's a family, it's a couple traveling, solo traveling, it's, it's worth to check your passport sure. uh, here and there. Uh, the second one, visas, yeah, they, mm -hmm. do, take, they do take times, mm -hmm. although uh, a lot of um, embassies, uh, they will do expedite it. It was, it's going to cost you more, of course, mm -hmm. and you need to indicate you need to have travel documents in place to tell the uh, embassy that I will be traveling on such and such date. But in order to avoid that, it's better, again, to give yourself plenty of time. Right. Right. Uh, you mentioned very important thing, actually, thank you, and uh, it's working with a travel professional. Mm -hmm. And I, I would, that's one of the first things that I would suggest. Mm -hmm to have work with the travel professionals. I think these days uh, having 
your trusted travel advisor is more important than ever. It's almost like having your personal doctor, your mm -hmm. personal uh, uh, financial planner, your personal accountant, because the world of travel has become and, be, uh, and will be going in, the, in that direction mm -hmm. is complicated. And you really need to have your trusted partner, mm -hmm. someone who will always be on your side. Mm -hmm. You need your advocate mm -hmm. in the world of travel. And that person will give you unbiased information on all the parts of your travel. And that person will tell you the minute you come to that person, well, first, that person would know you and your family. You don't mm -hmm. need to explain it all over again. So that person you know, will ask you questions, will help you mm -hmm. with your travel so plans. So that, that person could keep a profile on you because I think one of the things for me that's most complicated with travel, and I do a lot of international travel, is you know, what immunization do I need? Um, do I need to have a visa? Um, do I need travel insurance? And that's one of the things that's really can be very expensive. Yes. Um, but well worth it. And I've had so many experiences with my luggage, liking to go to a different country <laughs> and not having any clothing, or you know, the flight getting canceled and my connection is the only way I'm going to get to places. So travel insurance, I would think, would be something that's very critical. Very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, you know, your, your travel consultant will Mm -hmm. Consult you on which plan works best for your trip because, as all travel plans are not created equal, yeah. or mm -hmm. uh, and families are not created equal, the same with travel insurance and the flights, uh, cruise lines, and so forth. So, tra so I think insurance probably is, it is very and important for, for and international there, and there travel. There are many in options. There are many mm -hmm. options. They, they are, I mean, you might. Uh, in order for you to get a uh, coverage that you need for mm -hmm. a specific trip. Because as I said, yeah, a simpler trip might not require for you to have an extended coverage. Mm -hmm. You might just maybe get a simple airline ticket protector. Right. Or medical. There's or medical. medical. Yes. Or let's say if you have an extended extended family traveling, mm -hmm. and you have your parents traveling with you who are um, you know mm -hmm. a, a certain age, then you might require uh, an extended medical coverage mm -hmm. just to be on the safe side. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, uh, it's, it's something that I think all of us need to think about as we decide to, to venture out from Brookline or Boston. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Andrea, where do you want to travel? What's on, what's oh, on your to do? To Europe. Where in Europe? Well, I've been to Spain extensively, and I, I spent a lot of time there and enjoyed it. I know the language, so that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, even in the places where they weren't necessarily Spanish predominantly, it still helps to have something common. But, uh, you know, one thing I learned when I was abroad, mm -hmm. I spent a couple months there studying, um, a lot of little things happened to mm -hmm. me, and I got, I had the time to sort it out, I had guidance, but, you know, all the things you mentioned before, obviously the passport and visa, I had to set those up well in advance, yes. especially because I traveled in and out of other countries then, mm -hmm. they would be double checking that, you know, uh, my visa, they'd ask me a lot of questions, you know, how long are you staying in Spain, why are you staying in Spain, where are you staying in Spain, so you have to answer a lot of personal questions, okay. but, um, and I had set up insurance, uh, you know, currency I think was something that I wasn't necessarily prepared for going in, I didn't know much about their currency, I was able to actually change over a bit of cash before I went. Because and I think that's a, I think that's a good that's idea. A great, yeah. And it, you can't always, mm -hmm. you can't do it everywhere. So you have to mm -hmm. research what banks will allow you to Absolutely. change. Some branches do it, some branches don't. Yep. It, it really varies. There's currency exchange, and um, you all, you need to shop around on the rate as well. You absolutely need to know uh, different your rate places, before you right. go. Different yes. places will, will, will do a mm -hmm. different rate. They'll sometimes charge a fee, and the rate changes. So mm -hmm. there's never going to be a perfect time to change your right. rate. And, and, you know, what I found is I changed it a couple of weeks in advance, and it would change mm -hmm. while it was in Spain. It would change constantly, but it, it, it stays pretty evened and balanced. Well, I think it's, um, you made a good point, and, and Marina, I'm sure you were going to mention that. It's good to, when you're traveling, have some of the currency on you when you of get course. there. Mm -hmm. um, using credit cards now is very complicated. It used to be, when I traveled internationally, I would put everything on a credit card. Now there are surcharges. Yes. There are a few credit card companies 
that are not putting surcharges on for international, but you yes. got to search them out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, but you know, when you travel, you want to make sure that you have um, credit cards. You want to have a copy of the face of your passport, so that right. God forbid Absolutely. you lose your passport. So right. there's a bunch of things to check Absolutely. off. Absolutely. Right. And a lot of things yeah. I notice when using the credit card um, mm -hmm. that you'll want to look into. Uh, some countries, when you use a credit card, you have to show valid ID. And if you're an um, international yes, traveler, right. yes. that is your passport. So yes. okay. if you know you're going to be relying on your credit card, always. And it, you know, you really do want to just always keep your passport yes. on you. Yes. One thing that, one tip that I also would like to mm -hmm. give is call your credit card mm -hmm. issuing yes. bank before you right. go overseas. Right. Because you don't want to stand in front of the ATM and not being able to pull. Uh, cash because the uh, banks are different they have different policies around it mm -hmm. but when they see the foreign transactions there are many banks most I would say these days that might block it uh, I've, uh, I've experienced that <laughs> I think I think we learn more from our mistakes <laughs> and another thing where I didn't make a phone call recently is um, I have a smartphone and I was traveling to Israel and got there and had no service coverage and I forgot to call my provider and say, I'm traveling internationally, I want to put on just for the week I'm away, international coverage. So that's another point if you want to use your phone, and it can be quite expensive, um, but this international coverage, one of the tricks that I've done with my children is we text each other. Mm -hmm. And so they're not cost, it's not costing them anything extra Income. when I put on some of the um, extended international texting. And that's a great way of communicating. Yes. There are also apps that you can use. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. WhatsApp is my newest one. <laughs> and um, Skype, mm -hmm. both of those yes. um, can they allow when you too. can get free Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi yeah. coverage, you can stay in communication. And that's probably one of the last things I want to mention is that travel, travel's wonderful. And I hope you get back to Europe. And I know you have a couple places to go. And I've got this long bucket list because yes. I love that <laughs> so much. But what we need to always do is to be smart travelers and to check Absolutely. what's happening in that country where we're traveling to. Um, maybe letting the U.S. Embassy know that we're going to be there um, in some of those countries that you know may be a little bit more problematic. Less for secure. Yep. Less secure. Um, but the world is so open for travel now, and the sky's the limit. So I Absolutely. hope people see that you can travel in your own area, community but you can go anywhere in the world. And you know what I usually say, one of my fav favorite quotes about travel is the world is the book. If you don't travel, you only see the cover. Oh, what a great way to end the that show. Is. Thank you. Now I'm ready. <laughs> Rita, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us. Um, to view more episodes of the show, vi visit us online, BATV.org, or on YouTube, youtube.com slash Brookline Access BATV. You can watch this show um, on BATV, Channel 3 for Comcast and RCN. And um, you'll find us Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m and Saturdays at 8 p.m. as well. And Karen, you have a blog where you keep a lot of this information. Absolutely. So if we mm -hmm. mention something that you want to look into more or want to review, you can also find it on Karen's blog. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks. And we hope you travel. See you next time. <laughs>